So finally, a YouTube video that uses ChatGPT for things besides a listing description. What we're gonna be talking about is how to build an email campaign through ChatGPT for your sellers list. So everybody on your CRM that is a seller or has bought a house with you in the last 15 years probably, who could be a seller, and then any referrals that come in that you can just pop them into this email campaign and then they get fed value add material to know that you are the expert and that they should use you when it comes time for them to sell a home. This is step one. So we're gonna focus on the sellers, setting up the seller campaign and then breaking it down from there in our next few videos that are coming. And then we'll be able to do a buyer's campaign to start dripping into buyers and the leads that we get for people who are looking to purchase a home. So let's get started. The first part of this presentation is about kind of understanding the data and where you can find new leads and what they're going to be interested in for your email campaign. Because one campaign isn't specific for everybody. You kind of need to narrow it down for the needs and wants of whatever client or clients you're helping in a certain niche. So we're going to provide value throughout the entire email campaign. Every single email is either going to have a PDF or some kind of call to action that's going to get them to click on a link that goes to your website for them to fill out a form so we can get more information about what they're looking for or to schedule a consultation. The relocation guides, the first time home buyer guides, first time home seller guides, uh, investor guides, anything you can think of um, that your clients have wanted from you in the past, we'll start building those out. And if you wanna leave them in the comments below, I'm more than happy to help build out some PDFs for you guys. Uh, just let me know what you're looking for. Like I said, we're going to be providing value. So we might not always have the time, the mindset, the tools, and the skills to be able to do this effectively and efficiently, especially time because realtors are very busy. So we're going to kind of automate it with ChatGPT through a couple of prompts that we're going to give it and then be able to take the bulk of the email that's done for us and just edit it a little bit to be more directed towards the people that we're trying to help. So we have to understand the data of what's going on in the current market and then be able to figure out where we can find leads from. This is a little graph right here about the ages basically broken down into generations, Gen Z, uh, millennials, and then boomers, and the percentage that own and that don't own. So if we're looking at under 35, 39% own, 60% rent, uh, that's a big number. And then if we look at 55 to 64, 74% own and 25% rent. So going to the next one, we wanna find the opportunity on how to market to uh, these different categories inside. So this will be helpful when we start breaking down, really breaking down our email campaign uh, with more tags to filter them into specific campaigns below our full seller campaign. There's a lot of opportunity for the 35 and under because they're renters. So how to become a renter to a buyer guide would be something that they would be looking for, building credit, the buying your first home process, um, how lenders works, closing costs, all that kind of stuff. They probably don't have any information about this. So providing that value to them, we want you to be the expert and perceived as the expert. And um, a good example that we had from class was if somebody came into a car dealership and you were selling them a car and right away you were like, hey, let's go check out these cars. Well, it just feels like you're just getting sold to. And that's not the feeling that we want to give our clients. What we want to do is provide that value to our clients. So when somebody comes into that car dealership, they ask for the person specifically because they trust them. And then they're kind of wanting them to guide them through the whole process because they've built that foundation and that level of trust. So with the uh, Gen Z audience, the audience that's under 35 years old, these are some ideas that you can use. So partner with a property management company. Uh, create a how to become an owner PDF that out outlines the steps that we just talked about. So raise credit scores, get pre-approved and incentives from the state and federal levels uh, for tax breaks or whatever, whatever accommodates basically their buying needs or their selling needs. To break this data down a little bit further, uh, millennials and Gen Z, as of early 2023, more millennials, 26 to, 20, to 44, own homes and rent them. Gen Z currently compromised about 4% of home buyers, but that's up from 2%, so it's doubled. So that could, that could be a potential market to market to in the future. And the data has shown that many Gen Zers seem to be skipping that rental phase altogether. And 30% of them are buying homes directly after moving out from their parents' house. So what does this initially tell me? It, it just made me think that there's gotta be a co-signer on the house because a lot of 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds don't have a down payment or don't have enough money for a down payment. So. I'm assuming that their parents are co-signing on the house and then they're just paying the rent and then maybe paying back that down payment to their parents. So what I thought was, why don't we kill two birds with one stone? 
The parents are your in-town audience. So when you go through your CRM, you're looking for anybody who's on it that has children. Children from you know 12 to 25, basically. And we're gonna be marketing to the parents um, about buying a home and the investment opportunities and that kind of stuff, even if they already own a home. Because potentially, uh, with the data that we have for Gen Zers, those kids are going to be buying a home and their parents, the people we're marketing to, are going to be helping them buy that home. So the kids are going to be your out of town audience. So let's say, you know, you're in um, Seattle and there's a bunch of kids that are, go to UW, but their parents are kind of out of state. Those kids graduate and they're looking to purchase a home and stay in Seattle. They don't want to go back home and live with their parents. Well, now we can find a um, niche in the college area of kids who are about to graduate, getting a job, and then looking to buy a home. So this is also kind of with that renter's audience, but we can make it a little more specific. So if we are getting in contact with recent graduates and their parents are looking for more information about the co-signing process and getting a loan and all that stuff for their kids to purchase a home wherever they are going to college at or their college town, um, you can now market to the kids and then the parents. Um, that's, like I said, just an example of what we can do. It's not necessarily what we need to do. Task three is to understand the emotion. Um, there's a pessimistic view of Gen Zers and the younger millennials about owning a home, but overall, it's still pretty high. So 74% of adults in the U.S. still rank home ownership at the top of their list of things to achieve um, in the American dream, right? So although it drops to 65 for millennials and 59 for Gen Zers, uh, we still have a very large audience to market to. So over here, we're looking at the people who regretted buying a home. And I think this has a lot to do with the COVID years of interest rates being really low, but housing prices being really high. Overall is in the blue. And then yellow is going to be our age ranges. So 25 to 40 is in the yellow. So people who had no regrets, zero regrets, uh, under 60, just under 60% for overall. And then ages 25 to 40, we have just under 40%. So there's a lot of regrets going on in the 25 to 40 age range, a little bit over 60%. And it breaks down to these categories. Costs are too high, too small of a house, bad location. And we're figuring out uh, the people who have purchased these homes. And if they're in your CRM, are you going to go search them out? Well, what can we provide them that's going to be um, a fix to one of these problems? So a, a bad mortgage rate, uh, overpaid, um, too high of a monthly payment. Well, we can do refinance information and see how we can lower that interest rate. So this link right here is gonna take you to the percentage of people who regret buying this video. Um, done by a great guide, watch it, super informational. And I will have this link to the PDF for what I'm going through right now in the comments below if you guys want to dive in and kind of keep it for yourself. So moving on to task four, use your CRM. Everything we just talked about, those were the opportunities or finding the opportunities of where we can market to inside of our email campaign. What we want to do now is we want to organize the CRM into two categories, our biggest categories. So buyers and sellers. Yes, you may have relocation or you may have investors or luxury or whatever, but those all fall into a category of buyers and sellers. So focusing on sellers, because this is for our seller email campaign, um, we are going to categorize them. And if we know specifically that they are you know, wealthy and they're going to be buying luxury, we can go ahead and add that tag while we're in, in our CRM. Um, relocation, same thing. So you can kind of do, you can kind of double down and get a few things done while you're going through your CRM, but make sure everybody's categorized into a buyer or a seller. And anybody who's bought with you in the last 10, 15 years is going to be categorized as a potential seller soon. Who knows if they've had kids or they're looking to move to a different area or upsize or downsize, or um, maybe they're even going back to renting. But what, they, what we're doing here is figuring out our sellers. Organize your CRM, put the tags on them that are appropriate for who they are, and then we will get to the actual email campaign prompt. Now, this is what it looks like. Our 90-day email campaign prompt, here's the instructions. Um, it's designed to engage moderate and high sellers because we're providing value add information. Uh, campaign's going to include attention grabbing subject lines, compelling email bodies, customizable placeholders for mail merge fields. That just is the recipient name that's filled with their first and last name or their first name. And then um, strategically timed intervals for each email. So we're not going to be sending one every three days. We might send one every five days, every 10 days. Maybe we'll go 15 days uh, in the middle month of the campaign. And then we'll go back to 10 days and five days towards the end of it. Uh, so here's the instructions. We're going to copy and paste this prompt right here into ChatGPT. ChatGPT4, if you have the subscription, is going to do a better job of this. ChatGPT 3.5 Turbos, just fine. 
anything that is marked in blue, we're gonna need to change. So when we go up here, we see team and company brand. So we want it branded to you. So put your team name or your company brand in here. So it's all branded to you. And then these instructions, you can read through them, but it's going to basically break down an email campaign over the next 90 days. It should have about eight to 10 emails in it. If this prompt stops working, if it, if it doesn't uh, continue the email campaign, because there's a thing called tokens where it can only provide so much information to you in a single text box. If it gets through like the first two emails and then stops computing, just ask it to please continue where you left off in the uh, comment box where you copied and pasted the prompt. So you'll just go back to that empty box, place, please continue where you left off and hit enter and then it will continue with the rest of the email campaign. You may have to do this two, three or four times. So let's understand why this is going to be effective. Well, personalization. So. Like I said, the email campaign is not going to be for everybody. You don't want to be marketing, selling material to buyers. I mean, it might be beneficial, but in the grand scheme of things, we want to be focused on what they really want. So that's the personalization key. The value adding content, um, the campaign offers a mix of content types. So it's going to give you suggestions for PDFs you can use. And when you see it's a CTA at the bottom, which I'll show you in just a second, a uh, home seller checklist guide or something like that. Uh, well, now you kind of know, maybe I should create a home seller checklist guide. And all you have to do is use other people's PDFs to figure out how you're going to design your own and then making the content geared towards your company and how you would create a checklist for one of your clients. Um, it's going to build trust. So like I said, it's the car salesman thing. You, you don't want to just get sold to, you want to build a foundation and actually be a leader in, uh, the eyes of your client. So if they see you as somebody who is providing great value and really understands the market of the area that you're in, they're most likely going to use you over somebody that they don't really know anything about or maybe is new into the real estate agent industry. Um, this is an important one. This call to action is going to be very important. So that is the, you know, check out the PDF below or the attachment below. We're also going to be doing those um, website links. So if you have a seller campaign and let's say uh, you're getting to the point towards the end of the email campaign where you're like, Hey, if you're looking to sell your house, here's some great curb appeal ideas just to, you know, sweat equity kind of boost the, uh, value of your home. Um, doing some simple things. Now they're going to go through, do the curb appeal, um, get the house ready. And then in the next email you send is, Hey, if you'd like to schedule a consultation, um, click this link below. It goes to your website. They fill out a form, book a date. You can use Calendly for this, or you can just get the form and then reach out to them um, individually. But the point is, is to get them on your website and on the phone. So you know that they're interested in looking for more information, and then you can kind of provide more value around what that conversation entails. Um, and then that consistent communication, you know, real estate's all about points of contact. So the touches that you're putting out there an the email campaign is great because it's just automated. You don't have to think about it. Um, but when you do get a hot lead, somebody who is asking some questions, well, you want to do it a little bit more frequently, a little more often and make sure that you are giving them, uh, the information that they're looking for and then preparing them to start the process. By the time the final email and offer are sent, recipients should have an impression of your company and be more likely to choose you for your property selling needs. It's all about that nurturing. So here's an example of one of the emails. So. It's gonna break it down like this. Email a free resource property selling checklist. This is day 75. So when you're putting this into your CRM, you can literally just put it in um, the first one. This goes out day zero when you tag them as a seller. And then when you get through three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you're on email eight. Okay, well, it tells you to send this out on day 75. It gives you your subject line and your content. It's not gonna be perfect, guys. So what you're going to need to do is go to this, the subject line and say, is this how I actually would talk to a client? The journey begins here, Nathan, your property selling checklist, or would I say, um, here are five tips to increasing the property of your home without spending money, sweat equity, right? So you may have to tweak a couple of things, but you can always use chat GPT more for all of these emails that it gives you to come up with, give me five different catchy headlines for a seller checklist guide for an email. Um, same thing with the content. You can copy and paste the, the entire email into ChatGPT and say, hey, write this in the tone of a real estate agent who's been in the industry for 20 years and knows kind of what they're doing. So it's more professional and it's not so uh, it's not so cheesy with the copy that you're using because um, ChatGPT, if you don't give it a per specific persona and you say, just write me some copy material, um, it's it's going to be, it's it's just not going to be good. 
So, um, so we're, we have a uh, magic showcasing your home to potential buyers, awaiting the first promising op offer and experience the satisfaction when the sale finalizes to make this process even smoother for you. I've put together a complete property selling checklist, this checklist, this isn't an actual link. I just want to show you what it would look like. This could be a link to a Google drive folder that is open for everybody to view. And that link would be giving them access to download the checklist. So it comes up kind of in their browser, but that's the value add the CTA that we want to have in our emails. Um, the other ones are those website links where you can get a call or a consultation, but yes, this is the, the value that we want to provide. So what's inside, we kind of want to explain them what they're going to be getting because yeah, okay. It's a seller property checklist, but what's really going to make me open it. Um, this is where you put that. So home staging, pricing your home, finalizing the sale, giving them the, uh, material that they need to understand what's going to be happening in the next coming months when they're ready to sell. And then you say, you know, let's start this journey together. I'm here to help make this experience a great one for you. Best regards, your name. So this value add CTA download our free property checklist. This typically will pop up here in chat GPT. So below the best regards, um, it will say it will have your CTA and then what you need to do with, um, the CTA. So kind of the topic of what the PDF will be about. And once you're done with that, go to the comments, leave me what PDFs that you need created or, or what you're looking for. Um, I've created a lot of PDFs for this kind of stuff. So I can give you access to the PDF for you to recreate and brand for your own material. Um, we also have a class coming up. It's with whozy.ai and Eric Post, if you haven't heard of him, has created whozy.ai, which is like ChatGPT, a much friendlier interface. And you can check out what he's going to be doing on his website. I'll put that link below as well. Uh, he's going to be live in our class on June 20th. So it's going to be one that you don't want to miss because he's going to be going through a continuation of actually how to set up this email marketing campaign with whozy.ai. And it's, it's much more specific because it has parameters set around, okay, I want this persona. Um, you can set up your own individual persona and it will use it every time you chat with the chat bot. And the chat bot is basically chat GPT, but it has the parameters of only pulling data for um, sales and marketing and uh, market statistics and things about real estate and selling to consumers. So you're not having to refine your prompt and your search so much with chat GPT. It's basically already done for you. And you can also sign up for that whozy.ai pre-launch list um, on the link below in the comments. I'll have all these there for you. That wraps up today. So if you guys want help or you want more information, everything is down below this video in the comments. Go through, if you wanna sign up for Real Estate Super Achievers, do that, it's an awesome class. We're putting out a lot of great content and actually learning how to utilize ChatGPT beyond listing descriptions to create automations inside of our business so we have more time to focus on our clients and helping them achieve whatever goal that they have.